Hi, my name is Deborah Russell. I'm the Director of Workforce Issues um, here at AARP. Uh, my job is twofold. One is to uh, talk to employers, educate employers about the value that 50 plus workers bring to the workplace. So we do that um, in a lot of different ways. Some is based on research. Uh, I also established an awards program that uh, runs biannually uh, called the uh, Best Employers for Workers Over 50. Uh, it's an award program that honors companies that have good policies and practices for older workers. Um, and we have some other uh, programs and resources for employers, a huge website, that sort of thing. Um, and then on the uh, individual job seeker member side, uh, it's all about educating our members and preparing them for the changing nature of looking for a job, um, being in the job, how to retain your job, um, that sort of thing. So you can imagine in this economy, we're really all about uh, helping our members and older job seekers with the reality of today's job search process. In terms of, of older workers and some of the impediments that they're dealing with today, you have workers who have found themselves unemployed for the first time Ever. You know, I've worked in the same job for 20 years and now all of a sudden I'm out of work. The whole job search process has changed. Um, you know, jobs are announced online. Employers are not putting uh, job announcements in the newspaper, at least not at the rate that we, we would have seen 10, 15 years ago. Um, you have to put your resume online, uh, which is also new and different. Uh, you have to make sure that your, the words that are on your resume match the job announcement because employers are scanning resumes. So if they're looking for someone with strong communication skills and you haven't put anything in there about your communication skills, it's probably going to get kicked out. Um, interviewing has changed significantly. Um, so all of those things um, I think have had a huge impact on the ability of older individuals um, to successfully find employment. Well, I think the top five things that employer uh, that an individual would, would need to do really to maximize uh, their employment success. Uh, first of all is to really take finding a job seriously. For, uh, you know, I say finding a job um, is a job in and of itself. It is true. You do need to take it seriously. You need to get up in the morning like you would if you were going to work. You need to dress as if you were going to work. You need a workspace that really allows you to do that. So, you know, do you have a desk and a phone and a computer and all the tools that you're going to need? Second of all, it's really important to do your homework and understand um, sort of what, uh, assess who you are uh, the kind of work you're looking for, and what are going to be some of the trade-offs that you're willing to address. One may be you may have to move to a different city. You know, are you willing to do that? If the answer is no, then you take it off the table and that's not part of your job search process. Are there other things like that that are sort of deal breakers um, in terms of looking for work? Um, and then do that assessment. Look at the um, labor market. Um, what kinds of jobs are available in your community? Um, and do you have the skills to do that kind of work? Um, if not, what's plan B? Do you have to take some training? Do you have to go to school? Um, you know, what, what are some of the uh, strategies that are you gonna, you're going to use in order to look for work? Second of all is really leverage your network. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, you know, I have a network, but how are you leveraging it? Don't know. <laughs> I just know I know a lot of people. Um, so the important thing also is to make sure that when you're leveraging your network that you have what we call the elevator speech. If you had the opportunity to be in an elevator from the 10th floor down to the lobby and you've got the CEO of the company, what are you going to tell them in that short amount of time in terms of who you are and what you're looking for? Be prepared to do that because you never know. So make sure that you are very clear about who you are, what you're good at, what you're looking for. If you don't have business cards, get a business card and make sure that on the back there is a brief description um, of the kinds of skills that you can bring to a job. Because, uh, you know, how many business cards do you get and then you look down and go, oh my God, I don't remember who this person was. So there really ought to be a strategy um, for looking for a job. Reach out and, and look for those resources that are out there. Oftentimes, community colleges, for instance, offer career counselors. 
use the career counselors. They can not only help you with that assessment, but they can tell you what the resources are that are available in your local community, whether it's taking advantage of training, whether there's um, other kinds of, of resources that can help you um, sort of bridge the gap between unemployment and employment. Um, so there are a lot of resources that you should take advantage of and be methodical about looking for work. Um, I think that's really key. The new industries coming out, the emergence, emerging industries that are coming out, oftentimes are looking for people who um, are able to innovate. Um, so if you look at manufacturing, for instance, yes, those routine jobs of you know screwing the cap on the toothpaste, those are going offshore to never come back. Um, but as we talk to the National Association of Manufacturers, what they tell us is that what's staying here in the U.S. is that they're looking for people who have innovation, people who are good at project management, um, people who are independent thinkers. Um, that's something that older workers can do. Um, and they have that experience that they can draw from in order to innovate. So you may think of younger people as, you know, sort of the innovators, and they do. They come with new and bright ideas, um, which is very useful. But what employers who work with multi-generational uh, teams have found is that older workers also bring that experience. They've done it, sort of been there, done that, if you will, and can sort of bring that and fold that into decision making. So yes, in terms of looking at um, how the world of work has changed, um, I think that's important for people to um, understand as well. Um, we're never going to go back to what we saw you know, two and three years ago, um, because the reality is that industries have changed um, significantly, and older workers need to be aware of how those um, how those industries have changed and how they can fit into sort of what the new reality of work is going to look like, uh, which may be um, even looking at independent contract work. Um, it may be working from home. Um, you know, it's going to be very different, and we'll need to learn to adapt to that. I think one of the major concerns that AARP has with respect to starting your own business is please don't use your retirement savings in order to do that. Starting your own business is very risky, even as an independent contractor. Um, but there are a lot of resources that are out there, like you say, even if it's not financial. The Small Business Administration, for instance, has great information that helps you even assess whether you're cut out for doing that kind of work. Um, and then to you know provide some some guidance around how to get started. Um, really think carefully through when you're thinking about starting your own business. Do you even have the context to do that? Um, you know, sure, you have lots of experience and lots of knowledge, but if nobody knows about it, then you're not going to be very successful. So there are some rules that do apply. Um, when it comes to starting your own business. AARP has some resources as well um, that can, again, help you assess um, whether or not you have the, the, the skill and ability um, and even the personality, quite frankly, um, to start your own business. Um, and then some of the cautions that are out there um, with respect to that as well. Um, first of all, there are a lot of scams out there, so please be careful. Um, and second of all, um, you know, don't use your retirement security um, you know, to start your own businesses. Um, there are certainly lots of financial resources and options that are out there that you should explore first um, before taking on that kind of risk.